I have much better judgment than she does. There's no question about that. I also have a much better temperament than she has. You know, I have a much better. Yep, she that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Looking out a dirty old window, down below the cars in the city go rushing by. Mr. Trump. Not that it matters, but I'm much richer. Yes, I know how the electoral system works. Fantastic. No, Mr. Trump, I don't believe it's rigged. I'm really rich. Well, would you rather I explain it? Nope. Fine. Nobody would be tougher on ISIS than Donald Trump. Hold on, Mr. Trump, this will be on the internet in like five minutes. In the United States, a lot of the presidential election outcome depends on political majority between two main parties. There are several third parties, such as the Green Party or the Libertarians and so on, but our federal government has always focused on the Republicans and Democrats. The election process starts open to campaigners from all parties. Several people run for each party and throughout the debates in the primaries, our choices are narrowed down to who will be on our actual voting ballot. It is important to elect a president based on his or her political platform. This year especially, when both candidates Trump and Clinton are deemed unfavorable by most individuals, We'll, we'll see a lot of people just voting for their party's candidate, seeing as party loyalty could come across as that candidate's only redeeming quality as a president. A candidate's prior experience as leader is very important to see how he or she takes charge and handles political and social situations, which can help us as voters and as citizens feel better about our vote and better about who is leading our country. A candidate's ability to connect with citizens of all lifestyles is a very important quality. The leader of our country should have an understanding of all Americans and their plans to improve general welfare should apply to as many different groups of people as possible. For example, many people are saying that Hillary may only have gotten so far in the election because she is a woman. In some way, this is actually logical. Voters may believe that because she is a woman, she can personally understand women's rights issues and therefore would be a better advocate for women in America and would likely work harder to help that specific group of people. Others support Trump because they consider themselves a silent majority with opinions not necessarily embraced by the modern media and consider him a mouthpiece to their views. They support him because he's not afraid to step on other groups' toes in order to promote his supporters. We should compare our own democracy system to other countries' various systems of government. Not to see who's wrong and who's right, but maybe to look at specific points that are working for other thriving nations and see if they are relevant, safe, and applicable to America at the given time. There is no right or wrong way to govern, only different approaches to achieving the same goal of a stable economic and social system within a nation. For example, Iceland, a very small island nation, elects their president directly, meaning that they merely count each individual vote and the majority wins as opposed to having each area in the country have electors that vote based on the state elections. Countries with a certain political ideal should not be intrusive with it to other countries unless it would truly be beneficial. On various occasions, the United States has attempted to inject democracy into foreign nations, which almost never works as intended, and has often backfired and created an enemy nation. That being said, the democratic system works very well under certain circumstances, but does not necessarily work as smoothly in others. So do Americans have a choice? This year especially, it would seem not. At this point, we know that a vote for a third party candidate or a write-in would be a wasted vote. But when we're only voting between Hillary or Trump for party loyalty, or when our choice is based entirely upon choosing the lesser of two evils, is that really a choice? Are we truly voting for anyone, or just against the worst of two candidates? Okay, okay, but we can't just expect everything to get better if we don't do anything about the system that we have. If America wants to make its election process better and not get stuck with two people nobody wants to vote for, we have to change the way that we choose them. First of all, we really should do away with the whole campaign being Democrat versus Republican. By only having two main parties, they have to include both extreme and moderate views in order to cater to the most members of their respective parties. Then we end up with two candidates going completely overboard trying to capture the opinions of an entire half of America, regardless of their actual beliefs. Better candidates are out there, but by choosing not to be locked in one of the two main parties, they essentially throw away their chances of winning. 
It's astounding to see that we still support the two-party system, especially when George Washington himself warned us that it was a bad idea when the nation first began. Be sure to subscribe. New video every The American also, dream is dead. Mr. Trump, did that help explain things? When was the last time? Please, Mr. Trump, calm down. Jeez, Hillary was right about your temperament. <laughs> Where did I come from? Turn it off. Is that what I meant? Turn off the trap.